Now, if you look here, Talker Alias is working. I haven't changed the thing. I did tick it in the in the code plug, but look. Talker Alias means that they transmit their information. It's within the signal. You don't have to have a CSV file loaded to the radio. So that's really good news. So here's our software. We've connected the cable, as you can see. I haven't had to load any drivers. If we right click the device manager, there's no port that shows up. So it's not like that which is, you know, pretty good because we don't have to use one of those twin pin cables as well. And then so all I did was go program and then read, always read first, click OK. And it just read straight away and it reads quite fast and very reliable. I just need to just plug it in again, plug the cable in. There it goes. Get a decent, you know, get yourself a decent cable. They, they did give me a cable and they gave me one that was for USB-C because this is meant to be a USB-C radio. Uh, like I said, they're going to swap it, but programming it and using it is identical. Um, okay, it's red. It reboots. Go to radio information first. There's the radio. It's not even showing the serial number, but there's the radio. Let's go to straight to general settings, I think. And then parameters on the left here. And... DMR number that I've already put in. You can put in some text. I've put in M0FXB there for radio alias. Alias shows priority. So here, when you load up a CSV file, you can tell it to read that first, or you can tell it to use the alias function first, which is what I did, which is why you could see the that information coming in. I also told it to, let me think now. Um, let's get it right to send mine out as well. Alias data format says 8 bit. I'm going to change that to 16. I think we'll see more details on screen. And then this is the current zone. Obviously, the more zones you put in, you're going to have a more choice uh, for it to boot up at. Otherwise, TX time, we can change that, make that a bit higher. Yeah, say 500 seconds. That's how long you transmit for. I left these tick GPS is ticked, so that does come on. And it says here whether we want to see the frequency mode or the channel mode. Okay. Uh, on the display, data transmit server. What's that? Hytera or Moto. Well, I don't really know about that. Keypad lock. And then you've got CTCSS. So that's that. That all looks fine. The main thing is DMR number when you. Although it's not super important, get your radio alias, get your call sign in there. It will look better. And then password. We're not want to use any passwords. And even here, channel display mode, look, memory or frequency. You've got that there as well. So what you do to create contacts, go down to where it says DMR services, double click and start creating contacts. Contacts are the talk groups that you transmit on. Uh, so you have to link them to every single channel you create that is digital. Analog, you just program it like a normal repeater. Uh, so see, that for example, here we've got 91. That's worldwide. So if I set that in the channel, you'll see in a minute, it will, when I transmit, it will transmit on, on into talk group 91. Uh, so these are different channels that we've started making. So if I start on number four here, if we call this one, I'm going to call it uh, DMR Hubnet. So not analog. Let's do caps actually. Caps DMR Hubnet. Uh, and the frequency for my hotspot I use for that, 431.550. If you don't use a hotspot and you're using a repeater, you just have a shift. You know, that's the only difference on digital. Uh, and then I'll leave it in list one, but you can create list for scanning. Power, I'll change that to whatever you like. I've got it on low because it's my hotspot. And then it's a digital, not analog. So digital is DMR and analog is not. Click the arrows here. Open up this window. And then you can just finish off by going, you want to select the slot one or two. DMR is split into two halves, really, each channel slot one and slot two and that way that you can you can literally have two channels uh, or two stations transmitting data and other information and voice of course using one channel so it's a very efficient system 
Color code is almost like CCTSS, so different repeaters we use different color codes. Generally, hotspots tend to be one, and I tend to use slot two. Um, but if I say I want Hubnet to come through at the same time as the other channel talk group, I'll put this on slot one, and then they'll both use the same channel. And then the contact that we create, I just showed you, you need to select that down here. It says TX contact name, drop down, and I'm going to choose one that I called Hubnet, which is this one here, 23526. So yes, there is a learning curve to this, but it means that when this channel transmits, yeah, um, it will transmit on talk group 23526 using slot one and color code one. It's one of those things you have to hear it a hundred times eventually you get it. But that's, we're not done yet because when you create a channel, see this channel, we have to be able to find it. So that's when you go to zones because all channels are put into zones. So you double click and you can have as many zones as you want. Watch, I'll click add, add. We could do one zone for repeaters. Yeah, and we could do another zone for PMR. And in those zones, you put channels. So when you click, so if I click this top one, number one, I've put two channels in there. I can add, let's add the one I just made actually, which is DMR Hubnet. Right hand arrow, and you can take them out by clicking the back arrow. These are just channels that are there. All the channels that are in the whole radio will be listed as, as available for the A band at the top here and the B band, which is very good that it does that. So if I go to repeaters and PMR, it, it, by default, it will put one channel in there because if it doesn't, it won't even let you create a zone. So you get the idea that zones are like buckets of channels. So I put all my repeaters in here if I want. But I have You have to program every single channel yourself, even if it's thousands. And then you've got Hubnet zone. I could put all my Hubnet stuff in there. So I, I could send Hubnet in there like that. And then I could click on the ones I don't want and click the back arrow and it's going to get rid of them all. Put that one back in there, Hubnet. It doesn't really delete them. It just puts them back into the list. So this is basically a channel list that never goes if it's been added to your device. So you're just filling buckets with channels so that when you get your radio and you go menu, zone you select the zone and then within the zone you select the channel that's the way it's working that's why learning about contacts which are talk groups and the private ones when you create a contact if we create another one here go um add and then say this one here and we create uh t just call this one chat two like so and we do a group call which is a normal talk group well that number where's it gone chat two uh, there is at the top there. It does tend to juggle them around. Chat two is actually two three five zero advertising coming in there. Two chat two is two three five zero, but you want group. Uh, private means individual people or commands. All right, it's saying it's already. I've already done it, so that's fine. It, 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 you can't do two the same. So let's just change. Where is it? Chat two, let's change that to two, three, five, two. There you go. And chat is, yeah, two, three, five, oh. And then you've got chat one, which is quite a good one. Two, three, five, one. We can change that name to chat one. The most important thing is the number. The, the main thing is, is, um, no, it looks like it's already got that one. The main thing is that it's like phone numbers. You've got your DMR number. They've got, other users have got their DMR numbers. Um, and then all the talk groups have got their numbers. It's all numbers, linking numbers. It's very clever. So that's that. Uh, you can program the buttons here. I haven't done any of the buttons yet. So look at this. P123. Um, well, they're not even lighting up for some reason. Not sure why. Maybe for another radio. Uh, at the moment, you've got a flashlight. <laughs> Has it even got a flashlight? Uh, top button is Vox. Well, I don't want Vox. Uh, so we'll just do the top button as power, I think. Uh, just power. Mm, funny with the flashlight. I don't think it's got one myself. Uh, I'll have another look. But maybe it has. And then you got monitor, short press, up and down. Just you decide what you want to use with them, really. Emergency, you got record, looks like it records. GPS report, that's a good one, isn't it? Um, 
digital keypad. Oh, you can actually change the keypad to have commands as well, look. You can make it, if you say I added digital keypad, say number one, and I hold it down, say I connect it to disconnect on number one, when I hold it down, it'll disconnect. So I have to test that one out, it's quite interesting, isn't it? Buttons, menu, this is just, you tick all of these just to make sure that it allows you every single option you want. I might as well tick record. Um, it means it will be in the menu, basically, when you go to menu. UI, oh, keypad tones, you can turn them on. I actually like the keypad tones, but I know a lot of people hate them. Maximum volume, it's very loud anyway. Private core tone, group core, you've got different tones for different uses. GPS, can we add our location? No, I don't actually know how that works, but it seems like you can add GPS settings. Um, so we'll learn about that. <clears throat> don't use encrypt encryption. Receive group lists. That's again for another video, really. Quick text. Gnome worker, DMR, and then you've got your scan settings. So these DMR radios, there is there is so much they do. And then as you go save, you know, always save. So I'm going to put it there, RT data, and you can imp once you've saved, you can imp bring that back in. You can open that. So if you lose it, you can bring it back in if you lose everything. And then you've got right to radio, online test. What's that? Tools. Hmm. Okay. I'm just going to go right to radio and then end the video. It's quite a long video. And uh, if I can get a decent CSV var file in there. I will, yeah. I'm going to watch some other videos. I've, I, I have used this radio before. I think it's fine for what it costs. It's never going to be an Open GD77 radio, what? which is probably the one I recommend the most. But for what it costs, for what it does, it's a nice looking radio. It's one of the best speakers I've ever heard on, on a cheap, on a budget DMR radio. Uh, lots to learn with DMR. Best of luck with that. Bye for now. Seven.